Good morning, everybody. My apologies that we're doing this on Wednesday rather than our typical Tuesday. Unfortunately, I got sidetracked by some other things I had to get done yesterday. And uh, frankly, it just right over. So in its stead, uh, I posted one of our prayer walks yesterday. And so this morning we do our prayer time here in the chapel. So let's begin by just allowing all of our thoughts, our cares, our concerns to just melt away into the presence of God as we receive him this morning and make ourselves available in this time to give him praise and to give him glory. So let's pray.
Heavenly Father, Lord, we come into your presence with joy and with thanksgiving in our heart. We thank you for this time with you. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. So now let's take some time for repentance and, to con and confession. And let's start today by looking at uh, maybe something specific. In what way in our recent past have we done something within the realm of the church that really wasn't everything God wanted it to be? That maybe it was something we did or said or something we didn't do or something we didn't say. But let's confess where we have fallen short uh, in being the true body of Christ we are called to be. Let's confess those things and seek God's forgiveness. Let's pray.
Heavenly Father, we are so thankful that there is forgiveness with you. We bring our guilt before you, before your throne of grace. Please forgive us, cleanse us, Lord, of our sins, and help us to know what to do in any situation that we are encountering. And, Lord, so that we are also able to make things right where we have fallen short. Grant us release, grant us rest, and grant us relief. In Jesus' holy name, amen and amen. And that prayer is based on Hebrews 14 and John chapter 1, verse 9. And if you ever get an opportunity to come down here to the chapel to pray, uh, somebody has lovingly placed uh, a couple small containers that have, uh, they're both filled with all sorts of potential topics that one might want to pray about. And so you've got a quick little prayer guide there. So we've got one more resource av available for you. Anytime you like, you can come on down here to pray. Now with that said, let's move on to our next part of our prayer. And that is we want to be able to hear from God. What does it take for us to stop the things that are going on in our lives and just listen? What is God saying? What is God trying to do? What is God trying to get me to understand? And this means not only do we need to listen here, but throughout our day, the things we hear from other people, the things we see and experience uh, from the world, all can be ways in which God's trying to go, hey, do you see how this happened? This isn't what I want for you. Or did you hear about this? Here's something I want you to speak into. All of these things God can use to inform us of his will. So let's pray that we can hear from God and that we have that discerning spirit to know what it is he wants us to know. Let's pray.
we pray to you from Psalm 143, verse 10. Teach us to do your will, for you are our God. Let your good spirit lead us on a level path. Father, may we hear distinctly from you so that we know your will and yours alone. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Hearing, discernment, also gives us an opportunity to choose. Will we obey? Will we follow through with the things God reveals to us? This is so important. And the wonderful thing is, with all of these, the more we do it, the easier it becomes. And the easier it is to hear God, the easier it is to follow Him. Because we know when He gives us something to do, and we choose to be obedient, he will equip us for it. But let's pray first that we will are ready and willing to be obedient to the Lord. And not only do we pray for ourselves, but let's pray over the church, that as a church, we will be obedient to what God speaks to all of us. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, your word reminds us that blessed are those who not only hear your word, but obey it. And may it be so with us, each as individuals and as a whole, as a congregation, that we would be of one mind, one body, one spirit, because that's the way you've called and created us to be. And may we willingly play our part in each aspect of that. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Now, we want to pray that uh, we are obedient to what God's doing, but not only in, in obedience, but as I mentioned before, it's the gifts. How do we become obedient? Well, it's that willingness like we just prayed about. But it's also remembering we're not being obedient by our own gifts, by our own graces, our own talents, our own strength of will. God can use all of those things, but ultimately we need to lean on Him and not our own understanding. We need to lean on His strength and not our own. Because when it's our own, it will ultimately fail us somewhere along the line. But God never fails. He never gives up, and He's always there. And He will equip us to do whatever it is He wants us to do. So let's pray that we can receive and be open to those gifts 
God's about to reveal to you, to me, and to the congregation. Let's pray to receive those spiritual gifts from the Lord. God, release within us your spiritual gifts that we would be equipped to be obedient to you, discerning your will and fulfilling your desires. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. And now let's take time. And let's pray for the spiritual revival of the church. We want to pray for God's Holy Spirit to move in such a way that it's, this is not something contrived by us, but we want to, we want to see and experience the, the Holy Spirit of God poured out in a way that just fills this place and sets our hearts on fire, that puts us in a place we've never imagined being. It's about allowing God to speak to our hearts, to being open to God being in control rather than ourselves. So let's pray for that power of God to descend upon this place, upon this congregation, this community.
Almighty God, set our hearts on fire for you. Fill this place, Lord, in a way we've never imagined. Take control, Lord, of our hearts, our lives. And Lord, just pour out your spirit. We want to be prepared, so Father, help us to be in the right mind, the right spirit, the right attitude to receive that holy anointing. Amen. Spill from this place and spread throughout the community, throughout the state, and throughout the country and world. We know it happens. We know it's happening. And we believe, Lord, it can happen here. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. And to close, we want to take some time and pray a blessing on those around us. So I'm, as I pray, I want you to be praying and think about that person, that one individual that really needs you to speak God's spirit and life and fire into them and his peace over them. Let's pray. Gracious and mighty God, Lord, you know the names of the ones we lift up right now in the name of Jesus. We pray, Father, for your blessing and your anointing to pour over them, Lord, like the uh, anointing oil running down Aaron's beard. May your Holy Spirit pour down over top of them. Oh, Father, we thank you for that mighty blessing. Father, speak life into their hearts, spring renewal. Let their eyes shine forth with joy, their hearts filled with and overflowing with your love. Bless them mightily, Lord. In Jesus' holy name, amen and amen. Oh, I hope you know the power you have just loosed in somebody's life because God is moving in amazing ways right here and right now. So until next time, keep praying, keep believing, and I know God will bless you. And I thank you for being a blessing in my life for joining this time of prayer. Good day, and God be with you.